Hello. Today I'm going to be demonstrating configuring iSCSI in a Flash Array as a Service environment using Equinix Metal. The first step with configuring iSCSI is to ensure that the iSCSI VLANs on your Flash Array controllers are also uh, configured for your servers that you want to configure iSCSI for. So in this case, it's not. I only have my management VLAN and my VLAN, VM VLAN. And so I want to add both of my iSCSI VLANs to this particular server. We'll add them both. And then you want to repeat this process for any other servers you want to configure iSCSI for. Add both of those VLANs to our bond and repeat it for my second server. In this case, I'll be adding two servers, or rather configuring iSCSI for two different servers in my VMware environment. Complete the addition of both VLANs. These VLANs are stretched across both controllers to pr provide redundant access. They are then connected to the bond for my servers to provide redundant NIC access as well on those servers. So the first step is to add an iSCSI port group to my virtual distributed switch. Now you might have already done this if you have an existing cluster, um, but if you have not done this, you want to go ahead and add these uh, port groups to the VDS now. So we'll add two different port groups, one for both iSCSI VLAN. So in this case, VLAN 1016 and then VLAN 1017. We'll add 1016 first. The main configurations you want, to, you want to add here is specifying the VLAN itself, and then also specifying what physical NICs this port group should actually use. You can choose whatever load balancing methodology you would like to use, but the main focus here is to remove the uplinks as they're not in use and replace it with the lag, as currently LACP is required if you're using hybrid bonded mode or layer two bonded mode. Specify the lag and complete the wizard. We'll want to repeat this exact same process for the second iSCSI VLAN as well. Let's go ahead here and do 10, uh, VLAN 1017 and repeat the exact same process as before. We want to specify the 1017 VLAN ID. And since we have multiple VLANs presented to the server, we do have to add that VLAN ID tag and then also remove the VM NIC uh, uplink from the port group and replace it with the lag itself. This will provide us redundancy from the LSCP layer for our iSCSI connection. Choose the lag, make it the active uplink. All other uplinks should be at unused. Hit next and then complete the wizard to add this port group as well. Once this port group is added to the virtual distributed switch, any new servers you add, you do not need to repeat this process. So the next step here is, from a networking perspective, is to take a look at your MTU size or jumbo frames. Generally, this is going to be enabled for iSCSI in an Equinix Flash Array as a Service environment. We can confirm this by logging into the Flash Array UI and looking at the networking settings. For my iSCSI network, it's at Jumbo frames, 9,000. For my management network, it's at 1,500. So we do need to make sure that my virtual distributed switch is set to 9,000. It needs to be end-to-end -end to enable jumbo frames. Also, when adding VM kernel adapters for I to leverage iSCSI, you're going to want to make sure that that's set to 9,000 too. It's OK that management on the host side is still set to 1,500, but of course, you can change that. So now we want to add our VM kernel adapters and, of course, course uh, to our corresponding ports inside of a virtual distributed switch. So we'll create a VM kernel adapter and choose our VLAN or one of our VLANs. We don't need to select any services and actually we don't want to. It will get the MTU from the switch. You can see 9000, but if it's not, you can set it manually as well if you prefer. And then you want to add an IP address that is valid for that particular VLAN um, for that iSCSI network. So we'll add our IP information and complete the wizard. These VM kernel ports will be used to provide the network route for our iSCSI environment. This is essentially what's called port binding. We're taking a VM kernel port and associating it with a, or rather a VM kernel adapter and associating it with a port on our virtual distributed switch. 
so the iSCSI traffic will know where to flow through. We'll repeat this for the other iSCSI VLAN for this host as well. Choosing 1017, ensuring that we have jumbo frames, no services, and then adding our, um, our IP information for that particular VLAN as well in this VM kernel adapter. And we'll use the gateway for that particular network by overriding the default TCP IP stack and complete that. Now I want to repeat this process for our other hosts. As we showed before, we're adding two different servers into this environment. And so we want them to both have iSCSI access. We'll repeat this for VLAN 1016. And then we'll also repeat this for VLAN 1017 using the exact same process, using the exact same port groups on our virtual distributed switch, and just specifying, of course, a, a new IP address for this particular server in the correct VLANs with the correct IP information that we're using for our corresponding iSCSI network. The main, the main piece here is that you generally don't want to route your iSCSI traffic, so it's important to have these particular VM kernel ports in the same network, same subnet, same VLAN as your target iSCSI address. Complete this for the secondary VLAN with its IEP information. Main difference here is 192.168.2 instead of 1 and the corresponding gateway. Finish, the up, finish this up and add this VM kernel port, or adapter rather, to our virtual distributed switch for this server. Now that the VM kernel adapters have been added, we can finish configuring iSCSI for these hosts. Now, the software iSCSI adapter is deployed by default by the Equinix deployment process, but it does add a VM kernel binding to it that you want to remove. So go ahead and remove that if you haven't already before. And now we can configure iSCSI. Now, you certainly can configure iSCSI targets manually, but the recommended method for this is using the pure storage plugin for the vSphere client. So you can see we have our array registered in the client plugin itself. So this will allow us to run these automated workflows. Right click on the cluster, go to pure storage and add host group. By default, iSCSI will be checked and leave configure iSCSI as well. And this will configure the iSCSI IP target information, dynamic and static addresses, our best practices, and then also configure the object, the hosts on the flash array itself. It'll create a host group for the cluster an individual host for each server, and then add the IQN to those uh, respective hosts. Now we can go ahead and provision storage. Just as a test, we'll go ahead and create a VMFS data store for this environment. We'll give the VMFS data store a name, and give it a size, choose our cluster, Choose our flash array. As you can see, it's connected to Pure One, giving recommendations. Of course, there's only one array, so that's the recommended array. You can choose optional configurations like bandwidth limits or IOPS limits or volume grouping or just the defaults. We'll create the data store that gets provisioned to our cluster is now available for provisioning virtual machines. And you can use the plugin as well to see additional insights like the connectivity across the clusters capacity metrics and performance information and some basic summary details on the summary tab. You can add it to additional clusters as needed or if you have any and view things like additional insights around capacity in the capacity view or of course performance. Lastly, you can also check on the Flash Array UI, and you can see that the connectivity is indeed redundant across the host. It's logged into both controllers and on more than one port, confirming things are configured appropriately. This has been a demo of configuring iSCSI with Flash Array as a service on Equinix Metal. Thank you.